Number 34. A battleship that is 6 times 10 to the 7 kilograms and is originally at rest fires an 1100 kilogram artillery shell horizontally with a velocity of 575 meters per second. Letter A. If the shell is fired straight aft or toward the rear of the ship, there will be negligible friction opposing the ship's recoil. Calculate its recoil velocity. So meaning the recoil velocity of the uh, ship. So uh, here's our picture over here on the left-hand side. And uh, here's our battleship. Definitely looks like a battleship. Has a certain mass. It has a velocity before uh, the firing, right, of zero. And it has a certain velocity after. And this is the recoil velocity. That's what I'm after. The artillery shell here is fired off the back of the ship. And I chose it to go to the left. Doesn't really matter what way. Uh, but it has a certain mass of 1,100 kilograms. The velocity, by the way, of the artillery shell before it's fired is also zero, right? Because it is on the ship. And then after it's fired, it has a velocity of 575 meters per second. I plugged in my negative sign here because the shell is moving to the left. So now we have to think about, well, how do we find this? So if you were to consider the nature of this problem, it's basically a reverse collision problem, right? It's almost like the inverse of an inelastic collision, right? At the start, these two items are both together. And at the end, the shell here will be fired. So therefore, it'll be somewhere, you know, over here. And the ship will also be separate now, right? And most, and not most likely, but in all actuality, the ship will be moving to then the right-hand side, which we would expect intuitively. And we should expect the signs to work out accordingly. So it's basically, like I said, a inverse um, inelastic collision problem. So we started off by uh, the conservation of momentum formula over here on the right-hand side. It says the, that the momentum, I'm going to call it before the collision, should equal the momentum after the collision. And the momentum before the collision, right, is this before the collision, I mean, in terms of this case, it's more like an explosion, but I'm, like I said, I'm framing it in terms of a collision or a reverse inelastic collision. So before the firing occurs, both objects are together, right? So therefore, expanding the momentum, realizing that the momentum is equal to mass times velocity, I can say that the momentum before the explosion or before the collision took place is equal to the total mass multiplied by the initial velocity of both items, right? Or in other words, the velocity before the collision has occurred. And that will then equal the momentum after. Now remember, the objects are separated after the collision or after the uh, explosion. So I have the mass then of the artillery shell. I'll call, actually, I'll start with the ship. The mass of the ship, right? Because I called this sub one. So it's the mass of the ship multiplied by the velocity of the ship, right? After the collision. Plus then the mass of the artillery shell. I called that two. Multiplied by the velocity of that artillery shell after the collision. So all we have to do now is, well, I'd plug in the numbers, but actually let me solve for this already. Uh, let's just simplify some things. What's the velocity before uh, the firing of the artillery shell? Well, both, item, both objects are moving with zero velocity. So this whole velocity is zero, and this whole term drops out. So basically now I can simplify this to be zero is equal to m1 v1a plus m2 v2a. And what are we looking for? We're looking for the recoil velocity of the ship. I'm looking for v1a. So solve this for V1A. Subtract this on over, right, minus M2 V2A. So now we get negative M2 V2A. And that will, oops, and that will equal M1, M1 V1A. And now just divide out M1, right, to get M1 V1, uh, excuse me, to get V1A by itself. So our formula works out to be this, negative M2 V2A all over M1, and that will equal V1A. And there's our beautiful formula. All we got to do now is plug it in, plug in the values. So I'm going to do that um, over here on the left. So we'll do V1A, right, is equal to negative M2. So it's a 1100, so negative 1100, multiplied by V2A, right, or the velocity after. And that's negative 575, all divided by uh, M1, so the mass of the ship. So 6, oops, 6.00 times 10 to the seventh. And just throw it on into the calculator now. So let's do that. So negative, negative 1100 times negative 575, all divided by six times 10 to the seventh. And we get a value of 
0.0105. Right, and that is meters per second. Now it should be very slow, right? I mean, you're talking about a ship, right? That has a mass of six times 10 to the seven. That's 60 million kilograms. And then you're talking about a little piddlance of an artillery shell at 1100 kilograms. So the velocity of the ship uh, shouldn't be that great, but notice what sign is it, ladies and gentlemen? It has a positive sign there. And that's what we anticipated, right? We said that the final or the recoil velocity of the ship should be pointing to the right. So it does make intuitive sense. So that takes care of letter A. Why don't we move on to letter B, shall we? So calculate uh, the increase in internal kinetic energy. That is for the ship and the shell. This energy is less than the energy released by the gun, powder, significant heat transfer occurs, right? So uh, the last part you don't really need. What we need to try to figure out is the uh, increase in internal kinetic energy. So, um, you know, in order to find, you know, if you want to think about, well, how do you find an increase in something? Um, I mean, you don't even need to really think about a, a particular formula. But if you wanted to, uh, you know, find out if something increased or decreased, you can basically come up with this formula. The kinetic energy or the amount that you're looking for, the amount of increase, right, should equal the final value subtracted by the initial value. Okay, pretend you had an investment and you want to find out how much money it increased by. You invested $100, so you started with 100 Okay, and eventually it went up to a thousand. How much did how much did it increase by? Would you say nine hundred? That's easy. Well, exactly. That's what this math would work out to be, right? A thousand minus a hundred. All right. I know my hundred over here is really sloppy, but you get the idea. All right. So this formula should work out not a problem uh, to find the increase in kinetic energy. All right. So kinetic energy. And that's, by the way, also why you see a lot of times in, you know, physics and chemistry and science, final minus initial, all right? It's set up that way so we can find out if it increases or decreases based on the sign, right? If this is positive, it increased. If this is negative, it decreased. So the kinetic energy increase would be equal to the final kinetic energy. Now, think about the nature. Um, after, the, after the shell gets fired right from the ship, which is now moving that way, uh, we have two separate objects, correct? They are not bound together anymore. So therefore, the final kinetic energy can be rewritten as the kinetic energy of the artillery shell, which is two. I don't know why I keep choosing that first. Let me choose the kinetic energy of the battleship, which is one, right? I use the subscript one, plus the kinetic energy of the uh, artillery shell. That should make sense. So that's all the final. And then minus the initial. Okay, remember the initial kinetic energy was where the artillery shell and the ship were bound together. Okay, so kinetic energy initially. So now let's expand these terms. So kinetic energy increase should be equal to, let's expand the uh, first term. So kinetic energy, remember, is one half mv squared. So this is one half of the mass of the ship multiplied by the uh, final velocity, right? Final velocity, I'll put final velocity of the ship. And then plus one half, right, times the mass of the artillery shell multiplied by the velocity of that artillery shell finally. Okay. Minus now the initial kinetic energy. So I, since I'm running out of room, I'm not going to expand on it. I mean, it would be one half, right? It would still be one half times the total mass because they're together times then that initial velocity. But what is the initial velocity? In both cases, it's zero, right? So what is then the initial kinetic energy? It's big old zero. All right, so now I'm just gonna plug everything in. So kinetic energy increase should be equal to then one half times the mass of the ship, which was six times 10 to the seventh. All right, and that now, and then multiplied by its velocity squared, which is 0 0.0105 uh, squared, right? Plus, I'm gonna write it at the bottom here a little bit, plus one half times then the mass of the artillery shell, which was 1,100 kilograms, multiplied by then its velocity of negative 575 meters per second, and that's squared. So now all we have to do is just throw it on into the calculator. So let's do that. So 0 0.5 times 6 times 10 to the seventh times 0 0.0105 squared, right? plus 0.5 times 110 excuse me, <laughs> 1100, not 110. So 0.5 times 1100 times then 
a negative 575 squared. Remember the negative is going to cancel because it's squared. And now we get a value, right, of approximately 1.82. 1 1.82 times 10 raised to the, let's see, three, six, seven, eight. So it's about 182 million, all right? And that's in terms of joules. All right, and then it just told us that, you know, the actual amount of energy was greater than this because there's significant heat that transferred, but that's fine. So this is the increase in internal kinetic energy. So guys, thanks so much for joining us. Please remember to hit that subscribe button. And if this video helped you out at all, hit that like button too. I appreciate it so very much. I look forward to helping you with the next question. Have a great day.